Hi there, back again, and this time I'm doing a February monthly favourites. So I am desperately trying to motivate myself to do the YouTube videos on a regular basis. I really, really enjoy doing them, so it kind of baffles me almost when I get stuck not doing them. Um, you know when you, you procrastinate on something and you kind of build it up to be a much bigger head, head? A much bigger task in your head than it actually is. Um, that's kind of what I do with the videos I guess. Um, when I sit down to do it I get really excited and I really enjoy it and when I'm all set up and ready to go it's actually quite easy to do but in my head before I do it it takes a lot longer, the editing's really daunting and then I start basically talking myself out of it and end up not doing it and prioritising everything over sitting down to film videos. But I really want to do it so I'm going to try and do four videos in March, I think, so I was going to try and do one video a week, which I know is very low compared to a lot of people who do YouTube, but it's just trying to get myself into the routine, so hopefully having one a week, then I want to start to get into a routine of saying I'm going to upload that one a week on a certain day, then I'll hopefully try and branch out and do more than one a week, but let's not walk before we can run, run before we can walk, um, I just want to film one video, get it live and start from there. So without further ado, I'm going to start with my February favourites which was an interesting one actually because I realised already I kind of feel like I've stuck into a little bit of a makeup rut I'm always using the same things, kind of reaching for the same products so this last month I've been trying to shake things up a bit trying to do like play with some different products, particularly foundation I've been trying lots of different new ones so I've got a few different sort of primers and foundation or a foundation that I've been really really liking this month so starting with one of my favourites which is actually a sort of forever favourite almost rather than a February favourite um, and this is Chance Chanel's Eau Fresh version, which I always think I sound really silly when I say Eau Fresh because it's probably like beautifully Parisian being like Eau Fresh. That sounds really British. Anyway, I really, really love this. I've had it for years and it was only in sort of recent months, I guess, that I got a new bottle of it. But I've been wearing it a lot and I wore it a few times recently and a couple of times people have been like, oh my God, you smell amazing. What are you wearing? Which is always lovely to hear. Um, and it is, it's pretty much always this, I think, when they've said that. So... Uh, if you haven't smelt it, you should do. This is probably, without going too big on it, I think it's probably my all-time favourite perfume. I love it, I smell it, and it just makes me happy. It reminds me of when I first met Ollie, which is obviously a really, really happy memory. Um, and it's one that I just, yeah, I absolutely love it, and I, I hope I never, you know, like, your nose moves on almost, and you like other things. I really, really hope I never feel that way about this, because I absolutely love it. Um, one thing I was actually going to mention really briefly and aside is I have bare nails and very short nails that are in awful condition at the moment. Um, I was going to paint them just for the video but then I thought no I'm not going to do that because the whole point of me not wearing nail varnish at the moment is because my nails are in such bad condition. Um, I Back at the beginning of January I think it was I got acrylic nails put on and I love them like they looked fantastic and I sort of couldn't stop staring at them felt very elegant and wonderful but I just don't like the feeling of them so I took them off, I got them taken off and my nails have just been in terrible condition and I literally only had them on for just over a week um, and that's the only thing I could potentially put it down to and things like, I mean my thumbnail is broken down to like pass it's really flaky, this one's far too short, like they're all in terrible terrible condition so as a word of warning if you're thinking of getting acrylic nails I would recommend against it, I would just stick with your natural nail and looking after them in such a such like a mum thing to say, being like, don't do that, it's bad for your nails. Okay, appreciate it if you're going for them because they do look awesome, but if you're me, don't do it again. It's a really, really bad idea, Jen. So next time you're thinking of doing it, look back at this video and remember, really, really bad idea to get your nails with acrylic tips on them. So next up, along with the whole trying to look after my hands and nails and stuff, um, I've been really, really loving this new product from Garnier, which I went to the launch of a week ago, two weeks ago, so it's only a fairly new one. Um, it's a bit of like a late edition favourite but you know when you try something and you just think oh my god this is awesome um it's the Garnier Ultimate Blends Face and Body Multipurpose Soothing Balm in Delicate Oat so it is this product which I really really like it's there are also body lotions from the range I haven't actually tried that one yet other than this balm um but this for dry skin is an absolute wonder and it smells amazing and I can't even describe what it smells of it's like like milky ice cream maybe like baby powder and ice cream kind of that kind of creamy powdery yummy smell 
I absolutely love it though and it's it's a really really good balm like I have really really dry hands pretty much year round so I need pretty intense products for both my hands and around my cuticles and stuff because they're always always really dry and this one has been absolutely working a treat it soaks in leaves your hands really really soft and it's the sort of softness that lasts even after you've washed your hands as well which is amazing um and I just really really like oh it's got oh, it's oat, oat milk and white almond cream so maybe that's the sort of sweetness so maybe it is a bit of almond, almond? Am I saying that wrong? Almond or almond? Almond flavour? Almond flavour? Anyway, I don't know which one's right. Correct me whichever one is right because I'm being a bit blonde. But yeah, it smells really good. It's a really light feeling but very intensive balm. Brilliant for your hands and probably for other dry bits. I've only really used it on my hands so far, to be honest. Um, but yeah, really, really lovely for that. Um, also, I'm a bit of a Garnier... Uh, theme at the moment. I blogged this the other day but I've been using it so much that I'm actually almost done, well I say almost done, I'm like a good halfway through the pot already and again it's only one that I've sort of started using this month. Um, but I've been really really enjoying the Moisture Bomb Super Recharging Antioxidant Gel Cream. This is technically the night cream version of a sort of duo that's come out of the Moisture Bomb range. Just said I blogged about it the other day because I did a sort of high end versus low end post on the blog which I'll link in the comments below. Um, but this I've been really really liking. I really like gel textured things for the face. I like things that feel quite light and refreshing but don't skimp on moisture. So that's why I've been really really enjoying this. Um, I've been using it anytime. I haven't been just restricting it to night time at all. I just think it feels really good and it makes my skin just feel really really hydrated straight away and it lasts as well which is everything you want in a moisturiser basically. The only thing I wish they could do this exact product but with SPF, that would be the wonder product but I'm assuming that's probably not possible because the texture thing would probably get messed up because the day cream is more of a sort of traditional cream with a pump action bottle and that's got SPF 10 in it I think. Um, but in terms of moisturiser and when I've got dry skin, particularly if I'm sort of not going out and about and I'm just sitting working from home, this has pretty much been the thing that's been going on my skin and occasionally on my hands as well because again they're constantly dry, which is a joy. Um, on to makeup, there's a few products I've been liking. One is the Becca Backlight Priming Filter. This stuff is insanely beautiful. Like you have to try it. If you like a glowy base, then like I don't know how more people aren't just raving about this like it's the best product they've ever found because for me it's beautiful. Um, so much so that I have all well I say almost finished like the product's going down to about there now. Because you can see all like, the cracks and where it um, is sort of starting to finish. So I'm slightly concerned I'm going to be running out of this and I will 100% be rebuying it because it is so, so lovely. It's, um, I'll try and show you, but, like the product itself, you might not be able to see that. It's like a really light, it's got that kind of slightly tinted sheeny thing. But when you blend it out, so see how it goes kind of light and catches the light there. But then as you blend it out, it just goes into this beautifully glowy, radiant looking finish that doesn't look like you've got shimmer all over your skin, but you can just see how, you can see how it catches the light a bit there, can't you? Whereas, look at the difference. See? No radiance. Lots of radiance. So you can hopefully see a bit of a sort of taster of what that looks like there. But it has got that, it just leaves your skin beautifully glowing and after winter, everybody at this sort of time of year, radiance is kind of lacking so I think anybody who wants to add a little bit of radiance but doesn't want to go down the shimmer or highlighter route this is amazing there are days when if I'm not bothering with foundation I just want my skin to look nice and healthy I've just used this it feels lovely on the skin as well because like it feels hydrating and sort of fresh at the same time it doesn't feel like you're coating your skin with something it just feels like it's almost a skincare and makeup product in one which is really, really lovely. So absolutely loving that product from Becca and would totally recommend if you want a bit of radiance and glow, that's about the best primer I think I've ever tried. So next up on the favourites is kind of a duo of two products that I'm really, really loving together. Um, they're ones that each one of them is lovely, but it's together that kind of makes them the favourite. So one of them is the Dior Skin Forever and Everwear, uh, which is the primer which goes perfectly with the Dior Skin Forever foundation which is a reformulated version, I believe, of their long-lasting foundation. Um, and it's the two of these together that are just an absolute wonderful combo. Um, what I like most about them is it lasts, and it's, it's a kind of matte, long-lasting finish, 
but without sucking every inch of life out of your skin. It stays lasting but still looks kind of healthy and glowy, but without too much shine, which is the kind of challenge for me, I guess, is that I tend to have dry around the cheeks and eyes area, and then my T-zone tends to be quite oily. So if I go for something long-lasting, I find that fine lines around my eyes are really exaggerated, but then as the day goes on, my T-zone will get shinier. It kind of goes one way or the other. What I like about this combination is it seems to do neither of those things. It stays, it just stays really, really well all day long. So even if I'm in London from, I mean, to, to go, if I'm in London all day, I'm out from probably 7.38 in the morning-ish through till probably eight or nine o'clock at night through various different meetings or events and just catching up with people and all sorts of things. But it kind of lasts through all of that. That's quite impressive for me. So anything that kind of, lasts keeps me looking polished and I don't have to check on it every couple of hours to make sure it's still in place that absolutely gets the thumbs up from me which is why the two of these make my foundation sort of top choice I guess um it's one as I said because it, it's long lasting I don't tend to wear it when I'm just at home working from home and things because I tend to go for something lighter and more comfortable to wear just all day long um but when I'm out and about and I want to kind of look kind of vaguely polished and together um, then that's one that I would always reach for because it is just an absolute like stickler. So if you're like a busy career lady, this is for you. Who isn't a busy career lady? So next up are uh, my February favourite is this, which is from Revlon. So this is the Revlon Volume and Length Magnified Mascara, or the blue one as I've been referring to it. Um, it's basically one of their new mascaras. They've got five new ones. Each one's kind of designed to do something different. So they've got sort of the long thin lashes, they've got the big fat lashes, the fluttery, the like all sorts of lashes basically, with different types of wands and formula and everything to kind of deliver what you want from your lashes. The idea being that you could have these five mascaras and you've got your mascara wardrobe kind of sorted depending on what you want from your look that day. Um, this is the one that I've been loving the most. There's two that I really, really liked from when I reviewed each of them. This, the blue one, which is the volume and length one, and then there's the red one, which is the all-in-one. So it's a kind of small but plastic brush that kind of delivers really, really dramatic lashes. When I first saw it, I thought, I'm not sure about the brush, but in practice, it was really, really good. And it is one I'm still using regularly. But the reason I'm really liking this is the fact that I've got the waterproof version. So the waterproof version for me, the benefit is that I tend to get smudges above my lids over as the day goes on and it find it makes me either look tired or just a bit grubby and not very put together. Um, so the reason I've been liking the waterproof one is that it kind of gets around that. It doesn't tend to do that as much as it would with a normal mascara. So that's the reason I've been liking this and that's why it's been a favourite. Um, last up though on my February favourites is this that I'm wearing on my lips now, which is one of the Clinique Colourpop lipsticks. It's this shade, which is called 20 Sugar Pop. Um, I love lipstick, I really, really do. I love wearing it as much as I can, but what I'm not very good at is wearing it kind of all day long. So if I wear a bold colour, I'm terrible at actually touching it up and kind of keeping it looking as good as when it's first applied. So I've been trying to find more of a sort of nude, easy to wear, something that I can apply everywhere without needing the kind of bump of primer, lip liner, all of that stuff. I want something that I can literally just slick on if I'm on the tube or if I'm on the bus or I'm in a taxi, like wherever I am, it's easy to kind of just put on. This is the one I've been absolutely loving so far. It's just a really nice, I say on the lips, it looks slightly more pinky than it does in the bullet. The bullet is a little bit more of a sort of pinky brown nude. But it is, it's basically just that kind of flattering nude. It's the right side of brown to keep it flattering rather than the kind of 90s side, which I know everybody's loving, but I find can be on my face a little bit draining and just makes me look a little bit sleepy, which I don't want to look like. Um, the texture and formula of these is brilliant. It does claim to have that kind of colour primer base in one, um, which I never really know about, but it does, it feels nice on the lips is all you want really, so whether it's got the primer or whatever in it as well, kind of doesn't really matter as long as it feels nice to use, which it does. Um, so this is my other favourite. So as I said at the beginning, I'm really hoping, really, really hoping that this will get me more into the routine of doing it, so I'm aiming for four videos in March. If you want to see more, please tell me, because it's lovely to know if people actually want to watch my videos, I find that really encouraging. Um, I will bring more to you soon. So the next two options are either what's in my bag or maybe a daily makeup routine. I'm not entirely sure which one I'll do, so if you have a preference, let me know and I will absolutely listen because that would be lovely just to hear if people want me to do one or the other. Or of course, if you've got any other suggestions, they're always welcome as well. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for sticking around in between all the gaps of me not doing anything. Um, I'm promising, I'm, pro I'm promising. I'm not promising because I always promise and I 
I'm terrible at sticking to it. But I'm really, really determined. March is going to be the month that I get into the routine of doing videos. So please bear with me and I will hopefully have four new videos with you this month, including this one, so three more to come. Thank you so much. Bye.